And my technology involved projection. And uh, people were able to put together camera systems um, that um, would work under, you know, a number of circumstances. So in, in terms of the, although I am an expert on the cinematography part of it, I, I didn't um, get involved in that portion of it in terms of the Hollywood cinema. So my efforts for years were in developing good projection systems. If you do a CG animated cartoon, um, you know, stuff from Pixar or Blue Sky, you immediately have the ability to produce very good stereoscopic images. It's just built into the software. Um, you know, in, in terms of the um, live, so-called live action theatrical cinema, which is to a significant extent CG cartoons, like a film like Avatar, which is, you know, most of the film is uh, a CG cartoon. I had a, a different dream. I, I mean, I can't control the way people have used the medium. I had hoped that the stereoscopic cinema would be about actors and acting and involve people in stories about the human condition. But that's not what's happened. What's happened is it's a cinema of spectacle. And it's not the fault of the stereoscopic medium because the cinema has been going in the direction of spectacle without any help from me for a long time. Uh, as soon as somebody has a success, a financial success with a stereoscopic documentary or a stereoscopic buddy comedy, then the studios will copy it. And, but uh, that hasn't happened. When I was a kid, the time I was about 11 or 12, there was a 3D boom. People were making 3D movies for a period of about 18 months. House of Wax, Born a Devil. And just, you know, things like um, Kiss Me Kate, Dial M for Murder, Hondo. I saw many of them in 3D and I lived in New York City, so I could see a pretty good projection. It didn't last long, but it really made a very deep impression. And um, although I cannot explain it, I felt like this was uh, mine. I don't know how to explain it. It was just mine. I, I knew this was part of, of, I had a very deep interest in uh, stereoscopic images, stereoscopic cinema. I thought it was just beautiful. And I thought there was something extra. See, the movies in the um, 53 and 54 they weren't effects driven. Today, the stereoscopic cinema is entirely visual effects driven. But in the 50s, you had the usual mix of movies. It was really driven by stories and actors. And um, I was very impressed at how wonderful this kind of cinema was. It was just different. Looking at the actors and what they were doing, it was like I was there with them. And uh, I, I believe that's the strength of the stereoscopic cinema. But uh, it may, I don't know how long it'll take before Hollywood discovers it because it's being used in the most obvious way. They found a way to make money with it, and I don't blame them. But um, I think people would like to see other kinds of movies stereoscopically too. Although it's a hard sell. It sounds like, you know, it's a crazy idea, but uh, people aren't about to make them because they're gonna make superhero movies in 3D. I think human beings thinking about who they are and how they act with each other and with the world they live in is very, very important. It's very important for us to introspect and think about it. And it's also entertaining if it's done right. And the cinema of humanity, not of freaks in costumes, is what I had hoped. I had hoped that the stereoscopic cinema would be used to explore the human condition. And I don't mean it in a way that everything's gonna be serious. I mean, like, I remember and um, Kurosawa said that 
you can make the most serious film that you want to make about. It could be, you know, grim, depressing. If it's not entertaining, it's not worth it. So I'm not saying I don't want entertainment, but I'd like it to be something about other than Superman and Batman. I think people fall in love. Parents have problems with their kids. If people have problems with their sexual identities. Well, stereoscopic cinema, it sounds odd, but when you look at actors in 3D, it's more interesting and more involving. I'm not alone in this. I mean, I'm echoing, you know, Jim Cameron and Peter Jackson. But when I was 12 years old and I saw Miss Sadie Thompson, I would see any 3D movie. It was extremely engaging. I learned something and I saw things in that movie. And maybe the stereoscopic symbol will get there sooner or later. I had hoped it would be used for other things. But, you know, in, um, when I invented my uh, stereoscopic display system, I had no idea that aerial mapping or molecular modeling were going to pay the bills. I didn't know.